Let's talk about uh, Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis. Donald Johansson found Lucy uh, in 1974 in the Hadar Valley. Donald Johansson uh, was a nobody. Nobody had ever heard of him, and now he's a famous scientist because he found this Lucy creature. He admitted in this book, uh, Bones of Contention, that he had received a grant of, I think, $47,000 to go look for missing links. So for him to say he found a missing link is like getting someone, uh, a mother, to write a rec job recommendation for their own son. You know, it's a little bit of a slanted uh, opinion. Of course, he had to find something. He was about to run out of grant money when somebody uh, found him, found, brought him some bones, and they went and dug him up and discovered Lucy. There's an awful lot of controversy about Lucy, and I want to share with you to, uh, in this section just a little bit about Lucy. Hadar Valley is in Ethiopia. You can see it on the map right there. This is part of the Great Rift Valley. There's a crack all the way across this part of Africa, sort of like the Grand Canyon, only it's, uh, it's obviously a fault line like the San Andreas Fault, called the Great Rift Valley. And many uh, so-called missing links come from this area in uh, Ethiopia and down into Kenya. So this is a common place for them to go look for fossils or the so-called missing links. Lucy, when Donald Hudson found Lucy, he found 40% of the skeleton. Here it is right here. While they were digging out these bones, they were listening to a song that was very famous at the time, a rock and roll song by the Beatles called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which has the initials LSD on purpose. The Beatles were very big into drugs. We can go off on a long tangent there if we'd like. One of the Beatles... Uh, uh, songs as they're singing whatever the main song was in the background you can hear if you change the speaker over to the left or right speaker whichever it is you hear some people chanting through the entire song smoke pot smoke pot smoke pot through the whole song as a subliminal effect to get into the conscious of kids in the early 70s on one of the Beatles record albums on the cover of the album they're all standing there with their suits and ties smiling for the picture all around them is marijuana plants not a lot of people caught that, of course, you know, but well, it's marijuana plants everywhere. It looks like, looks like, you know, shrubbery around them or something, but it's all marijuana plants. They were very big into drugs. Anyway, Johansson was listening to the song as they dug it out, so they decided to name this skeleton Lucy. There is an awful lot of controversy about this. There are some who think and have some pretty good evidence that the hip bone actually came from a young African girl. It wasn't even part of this skeleton. It was brought later. You have to understand how these guys find their fossils. They will go to Africa and they will hire the local natives to go look for bones. And they will pay them if they find, if they're successful, and bring them some good fossil skeletons. Well, <laughs> in a country where the people are starving to death and any amount of money is great, you know, there's a real strong indication that they're likely to bring in anything, you know, and try to make you buy, try to get you to buy it, you know, as a missing link. So, Donald Johansson found 40% of the skeleton. This is considered the most complete uh, Australopithecine ever found. So one of the quiz questions will be, what is the, the most famous Australopithecine? This is supposed to be part of the missing links for, you know, A-U-S-T-R, let's see, Australo, hmm, we better look that one up. Like Austra Australia, comes from the root word Australia. And then the last part is afarensis, A-F-E-R-E-N-S-I-S, -E -E for Africa. Afarensis. The whole thing is explained and how they name them, etc., in this book, Bones of Contention, which is $13 through our ministry, or you can buy it for $13.50 through other places if you'd like, but it's really a very good book, and it's got a section on each of the so-called cavemen. But Lucy, there's Australopithecus there, A-U-S-T-R... A-L-O-P-I-T-H-E-C-U-S, Australopithecus, just to the right of the circle on the left. They have Australopithecus robustus and Australopithecus afarensis. Robustus means it's bigger and stronger, more robust, where that gets the name. Um, Donald Johansson claimed that he found this creature, Lucy, and he found 40% of the skeleton over a relatively small area. I think he said 70 square meters is the way he... Described it. If I'm not mistaken on that, I don't know. But I named it Lucy because of the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. In National Geographic in 1985, an article appeared about Lucy. 
they pointed to this knee joint, the bottom part of the upper thigh bone and the upper part of the lower leg bone, the knee joint, and said this was Lucy's knee. Now actually, this particular knee joint was found a year later, I'm sorry, a year earlier. It was found a mile and a half away and 200 feet or 70 meters deeper in a totally different layer of strata. This knee, knee joint, National Geographic labeled it Lucy's knee five times. They called it Lucy's knee. Now, Donald Johansson, when he speaks on the topic, is very careful not to call it Lucy's knee because it's obviously not. You know, it's found a mile and a half away. But Tom Willis uh, of the Creation Ministry in uh, Kansas City area has a great article about Lucy's knee joint and we'll get you some copies of this. Lucy remains at college. You can get a hold of Tom Willis and get all sorts of details on what really happened with uh, Lucy's knee. Tom Willis went to hear Donald Johansson speak, and he, Donald Johansson was at take, at taking questions at the end. So there were no questions with 800 people there, so Tom volunteered to ask him a few questions. You know, was that really Lucy's knee? You know, and why did you allow National Geographic to call it this five times when it wasn't Lucy's knee? You're allowing this... Uh, this fraud to be perpetuated when it's really not. But the reason they like this one to be part of Australopithecine is because the bones are slightly bigger than an ape. On the far right, you'll see the, the bones of an ape, which are straight in a straight line. The lower leg and the upper leg line up. On a human, your thigh bone is angled because your hips are wider than your knees in your normal stance because we walk upright, whereas an ape that walks on all fours or bent over they have a different bone structure in their leg. And so your thigh bone is angled coming off of the knee joint. Um, this one that they called Lucy's knee, actually the Hadar knee, was also angled. He said, this proves it's becoming a human. Tom Willis's number is right there, 816-618-3610. Uh, if you want to get hold of Tom Willis, he's got plenty of material on Lucy and uh, really gives them fits over this because they just, they're simply lying. Uh, to try to claim all this is a missing link. But they're so desperate for evidence for their evolution theory that any evidence is good enough. You know, we'll take it. We'll use it. Um, he said, because the femur was angled, that proves it is becoming a human and learning to walk upright. See, one of the millions of changes that would have to happen between an ape and a human is it have to go from walking on four legs, mostly. Apes, uh, chimpanzees can walk on two sometimes, but it's uncomfortable for them because of the way their hip is built and their back is built. They're more comfortable walking on four. Plus, their fingers and toes curl under. They're called knuckle walkers. If you watch a chimpanzee walking, you know, they walk on their knuckles like this. They don't walk flat on the bottom of their feet or hands like, like we would. They have their toes curled under. Um, the femur was angled on this one they found a mile and a half away that they, some claimed was Lucy's when it really wasn't. The truth of the matter is, any monkey that climbs trees has angled femurs. It's called ab, aboral, abhoral, how do you pronounce that, Jan? You're the English, you know, tree dwelling. Abhoral, living in trees. Tree, tree, tree dwelling monkeys have angled femurs. So it's not proof it's becoming a human. It could be just a tree climbing monkey that he found the bones of. Secondly, his claim was Lucy's knee was slightly bigger than a regular ape. Well, that doesn't prove a thing, of course, you know. The bones of a Clydesdale are slightly bigger than a regular horse. That does not prove it is becoming a truck. It's just a heavy-duty chimpanzee, that's all. And if the Bible is correct, before the flood came, the world was very different. People were living longer and probably growing bigger. And it makes sense that probably everything was bigger and stronger before the world was destroyed by that flood in the days of Noah. So... Lucy is not a missing link at all. The St. Louis Zoo has a display up, a wax figure of Lucy. Now, you've got to understand, Lucy is three feet, six inches tall. So when you go to the zoo, and I've been there many times, every time I go to St. Louis, I go there just to keep my blood boiling uh, because, because of all the lies in that crazy place, trying to push evolution. For instance, when you walk in to this one section of the zoo, they've got a, a um, Charles Darwin sitting behind a desk in his little office. And he's, it's a mechanical thing, and he stands up and begins talking to you about evolution. And the whole zoo seems to be devoted to pushing this one theory of evolution. Why on earth does a zoo have to talk about evolution? Why, don't you can't, why can't you go look at the animals, you know? But they think they have to use the zoo to teach the boys and girls who come about evolution, and that's what they're doing at many zoos across, across the country. But 
Actually, for Lucy, not one foot bone or hand bone was found. None. But on St. Louis Zoo's wax figure, they put human feet and human hands. No bones at all were actually found. Other australopithecines that have been found all had curled toes. They were obviously knuckle walkers. And their big toe was separated from their other toes, indicating it's called a grasping foot, where they can actually grab a tree branch with their foot. You can't do that because your toes all line up, and you know your big toe and other toes line up. But all the other australopithecines had this grasping foot with a toe separation. But the St. Louis Zoo put Lucy with human feet on there. There's no telling how many hundreds of thousands of kids go through this thing and see this every year and, and are impressed with the idea, wow, they have evidence for evolution. And it's just pure propaganda. That's not evidence for evolution. A professor from Washington University said, the statue is a complete misrepresentation. And I believe they know it is a misrepresentation. That is a fancy word that means a lie. The zoo director of education, Bruce Carr, said, zoo officials have no plans to knuckle under. I don't know if there's a pun intended there or not, but <laughs> certainly would be one. He said, we cannot be updating every exhibit based on every new piece of evidence. We look at the overall exhibit and the impression it creates. We think the overall impression this exhibit creates is correct. Now, excuse me, Bruce, what impression are you trying to get across to these kids? Are you trying to make them believe there's evidence that apes turn to humans or ape-like creatures turn to humans? Is that what you're trying to make the kids believe? Well, if you really have some evidence for evolution, I would like to see it. I'm not against evidence. I'm against lying. And this is lying. That's not evidence for evolution.